Okay, so from theory to practice, we're going to jump into Power BI and I'm going to show you how a Power BI report is built. I'm going to do this very quickly. This is not meant to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. I just want to showcase the product, showcase the features that we talked about and showcase the workflow. So we will go step-by-step -step and see how this is done fairly quickly, but you will get an idea of the different components. Okay, so let's jump into Power BI. The first thing we're going to do is to get data. And we're going to get data from an online source. So I have the online source in here. It's uh, the North Wind data set. It's a um, data set that Microsoft provides for everybody to use. So you will get this Power BI file and you will be able to do the same thing. And it's a perfect solution for training or data set for training. So we're going to copy that. And the first thing, if you remember on the workflow, we're going to get data. We're going to put data into Power BI. So we go here to get data. And there are some sources here available. This is the most frequent sources, but we're going to pick more so you can see all of them very, very quickly. So here you have all the sources that are available. We're going to pick online services, not sure. All data. You can actually write here, all data feed, which is basically a feed where you can grab data through a uh, protocol. We paste the source and we click OK. And now what is going to happen is Power BI is going to take us to Power Query. OK, so the first thing you will see for Power Query is you have a navigator and it tells you, OK, what things do you want to import? So we're going to import categories. We import customers. We're going to import order details. Orders, I have a cheat list in front of me, and products. So those are the tables that we're going to import. Remember this, you don't need to import all tables just because you have them. Okay, we're going to import the tables that we're going to use. So now that we have them, we just click to edit. You can choose to load everything, but we're going to just edit. So you see the Power Query experience. And it takes us to Power Query. Fantastic tool. So what do you see here? You have a home where you can do some transformations, typical transformations. You have transform. You can do extract, you can do transpose, you can do pivot, and pivot, all kinds of cool transformations. You can add columns. This is more, a little bit more for advanced users, I would say. And here we have the tables that we imported. Categories, order details, orders, and products. And if we go here to categories, we see that there are two columns that we don't want. So we're just going to pick the ones that we want, right click, Let's do it again. So right click and remove all the columns. And we're going to do that for every table. So now that we have done that, we can do all kinds of different transformations, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. We will do a separate tutorial for Power Query altogether. What we're going to do now that we have the data and the shape that we want, we go here to Home, Close and Apply, and we load the data. We're going to load the data to Power Pivot. And if you remember on the steps, on the flow steps, Power Pivot is where you create your data model and you create your DAX functions, okay? So to see our data model, we go here to the Relationships tab. And I don't know if you remember, but I was talking about that if your data source has the relationship set, it will get imported into Power BI. So as you can see, we have the model ready. We have absolutely nothing to do. And hopefully it is good enough so you know, it, it works as it should. 
Okay, so now that we have our data model, what we are going to do is create the first DAX measure. So we go, in this case, we're going to create a calculated column instead of a measure. Don't worry about that terminology if you don't know, we're just going to create a formula. So we go back here, and if you see here, we have a table that is called order details. And that, there we have all the order lines and the products that were bought. So we have here uh, the order ID, the product ID, and then we have unit price and quantity and discount. So we don't have a column that gives us the total price. And that's what we want, right? So, or the total sales. Let's create that column. You go here to modeling and then new column. Total sales is the order details price. Let's not worry about the discount for now. Again, this is not a Power BI tutorial per se, uh, times quantity. And this works the same way you would do in Excel. Now, if you want to do this as a measure, it's absolutely possible. You have to do it in a different way. We will talk about it when we talk about DAX and you know, modeling and all that kind of stuff. So now we have a column that gives us the total sales. So we can start actually building our report. That's what we came here to do. So you have different pages here. The only thing you need to do is create a new page. Let's leave the page with the source there so we have it available. And we're going to create a quick dashboard. We are going to get from orders the order date. Normally you would have a um, calendar, but as this is a quick demo, we're not going to do that. So let's see, let me do it again. We have order date, put it there. We want the year, so we're going to take away the other ones. As you can see, the visualization the Power BI chooses by default is a bar, a column chart. We want to change that to a table to see the data and now to a filter because we want to filter by year. And we're going to change that to a list. And then here on the format pane is where you can format the properties for that visual that you have selected. We're going to have general uh, do, 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 horizontal. And this is Let's give us a slicer, a slicer that is actually easier to use on mobile and because we are going to create the mobile report, right? Then it is easier to click with your finger if you have that type of report. What else can we do? We have, um, let's see, we put order date and we want table to see what it is in there. We put again a year so now we have the year and now we're going to put sales we do want to know how much we sold per year right and now we're going to have as a chart and then we're going to have in the format pane the levels on so we can see how much we've sold Easy, right? Now, we have a table with the products and the categories. So let's do, uh, let's see, we have a category name. And then we put sales, it was on the you can search here, by the way, if you want to search instead of looking on the tables. I know this data set, I've used it a lot, so that's why, but otherwise you can, you can search. So here we have total sales by category. And we can use this as a tree map to use it as a filter, but we can have it as a filter, you know, that give us some insights. Super cool. Now let's go down product name and then we put sales. 
you know, this is basically how you would work with pivot tables in Excel. There's no difference at all. So now we have uh, total sales by year, category. We can put it there. And then we just want to know where those sales happen. So we have a table with customers and we put customer country. And then we put sales. You know, Power BI tries to get the best um, visualization it can based on the data. Sometimes it does a good job like with maps, but sometimes it's not that obvious. So now we have sales by country. And we have all these without we just created one DAX measure, nothing else. Now look at this. If we want to know the sales of beverage per year, I just click on beverages. And then I can see here how it's doing by year. And here we can see by product and by country. You can control click and say, okay, I want to know beverage chai. And then everything will filter accordingly. This is super powerful. And then you can go, I just want to see 1998. And then you see just that. So now you have a fully interactive report where everything you see in the canvas is a filter. What we're going to do now, well, make sure that once you've created the report that you like, you make it a little bit beautiful, right? Uh, these, the standard look of Power BI reports are not the best. I'm going to show you, I will show you more examples, but just an easy quick, you don't need to be a designer to do that. It just looks so much better right out of the bat. So this is how it looks to publish it in Power BI, the service. Now you know what that is. We click on publish. Do you want to save your changes? Sure. It will always ask you to save before publishing them. And then do you remember I told you that it will ask you which workspace you want to save it on? We're experts now, right? So we know exactly what this is. We have a North Wind work uh, workspace. We click that. And then I already have a copy. It was the one I showed you. So we replace it. And now Power BI is working towards pushing this file to the cloud so we can share it with everybody. Now, two things are going to happen now. We're going to get a link to go to Power BI service, which is this one. And then we get a link to get quick insights. This is machine learning algorithm that will go through your data set and will try to find correlation. I will try to find outliers. Check it out. Sometimes it finds something, sometimes it doesn't, but it's worth when it finds it because it just goes through the entire data set, something that you might not have the time to do. So we go to open the file in Power BI service. And this is how Power BI service looks because I am logged in on Windows, it recognizes me, and it hasn't asked me to log in. But the first time you might need to log in, okay? So here we have, here we have the report and we see here that this is the North Wind workspace that we talked about. Here we see the data sets, the reports and the dashboards that I talk about. Workbooks is just when you upload an Excel file, it might show up like Excel online. So nothing too, too exciting about it. Here I have the North Wind dashboard that I show you on mobile, the two tiles, you remember? And there is a phone view that I show you when we were watching, when you're looking at the report on mobile. Uh, here is a report. And here you have the possibility to print, publish to web, embed in SharePoint Online, embed to PowerPoint. You can uh, set filters, you can schedule refresh this report. I can show you that very quickly. You will go here, schedule refresh. And because this is a 
an online source. Yeah, online sources nowadays actually need the gateway, personal gateway, but let's not go into that. But otherwise you will refresh it here. Um, what else? You can publish it as an app. We talk about that. So apps, if you remember what it was, when you publish it as an app, your viewers will be able to consume the report but won't be able to do any edits. Here, I can edit the report and do changes and add things. And But if you just want to say, okay, this is a standard report, I just want you to view it, you would go... Let me go... There, to the workspace. And then I already have it updated as an app, as it published as an app. So you just update if you have a new version. This is also a very good way to have like a test environment for you before you push to your, um, to your users. And then you'll find your apps in there.